Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. Now today I'm going to be discussing or sharing with you seven watches that I think or are in the process of doubling their value. Now today's wristwatch check, I've got the Zin 104 back in rotation. I'm wearing it on my lucky Zulu, not a NATO strap, a Zulu strap. Uh, this is an olive uh, Zulu strap and actually this is my lucky Zulu strap because I've had it longer than, uh, well, I've had a lot of my watches, but longer than I've had the channel. The Zin, back in rotation. Actually, the Zin is pretty fitting for today's video. While it is, I don't think it's gonna double in value, it is a brand, a non-luxury brand, that retains its value very, very well. And I think this is a major important uh, point to make because there is a misconception that watches have to be expensive in order to, to increase in value. That, that's uh, not true at all. Uh, all the watches we're talking about today are under $500, but they won't be <laughs> for much longer. Um, actually, some of them are already skyrocketing as we speak. And if you're watching this in the future, just check the date of this video because uh, especially to see if, if any of my predictions have come true. Let's roll the intro and get into today's video. Welcome back guys. Now, before we discuss watches, uh, I just, I do want to share with you something that's going the other way, that is decreasing in value. And it is a little bit of a sad indictment of the times we live in. Uh, I've recently become obsessed with the Tashin art books. I just got this in, this is um, a beautiful book on Vermeer with stunning large prints, really beautiful high quality, um, and just stunning. I, I, I adore Vermeer, as you guys probably know already. But anyway, um, this rather sadly was $11, brand new, sealed in plastic, $11 on Amazon. I mean, I guess civilization's downfall is uh, my gain, I guess. But anyway, uh, I just thought I'd share that with you guys because it is a bargain. Let's get back to watches before I've uh, completely go off on the tangent, get the old parker out. Right, five watches under $500 that are in, gonna increase in value. So let's start with definitely an obvious choice and a favorite of the channel. It's no secret. It is of course the Timex, 60s Timex's uh, Moneywind and Automatics. This particular one is the Marlin. I have reviewed it, I'll add a link down below and in the corner. This carries a lot of the traits that make something increase in value. First of all, Timex, as you know, do not make uh, mechanical timepieces anymore. They've gone completely quartz. Now, I won this uh, watch amazingly. This is actually my second uh, little mid-century uh, watch from Timex. I won it for, I, I put a cheeky bid in, I think it was about uh, 40, yeah, it was going for 40, uh, 39.99, that was it. Uh, I didn't expect to win. I was after this particular version because if you could tell by the reference number at the six o'clock position, the last two digits refer to the year it was made and it's 68, which confirms that it was made most likely at the Dundee plant, so made in Great Britain. Again, this is another trait to look out for. It was actually made in the country of my birth, which is something kind of special to me. And I really do believe these are going to skyrocket in price because obviously they're not making them anymore. We're seeing a return uh, in, in demand for more conservative mid-century sizes. Uh, also, I mean, look at this design. It's stylish, it's elegant, it's timeless. I mean, no pun intended, it really is timeless. We're talking about a watch that is twice my age, you know? <laughs> Probably, yeah, almost twice my age. And in the true Timex slogan on their advertising of back in the 60s, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. The movements are not pretty, but they are incredibly robust. This is still keeping time, it's never been serviced. It just shows you just how well these, these watches were made. Okay, it's not 
any kind of premium quality. We have a steel capped case, but you do get a rather astonishing amount of refinement, that beautiful champagne dial. Uh, it's also quite slender. It has the appearance of being much more expensive and this helps its desirability. Now the downfall is if something does go wrong, you have to source another one to get parts. Uh, but you know a competent watchmaker can repair these so it's not the end of the world however at their price it's an absolute bargain I predict and it's already happening as we speak they're gonna at least double probably triple in price in the next few years so that was my first choice now the second choice it is a bit obvious but I wanted to talk about it today um, it is my Seiko the Giugiaro design better known as the Ripley watch fantastically 80s as featured in uh, James Cameron's sequel to the one of my favorite films Alien uh, so this was in Aliens worn by Sigourney Weaver well not this particular one this is a reissue and as you can see I'm a big fan of the franchise you guys know all this so the precise reference of this is the SCED035 now there was a number of Giugiaro designed uh, watches in that movie. There's also a uh, black PVD version which was worn by the character Bishop. Uh, uh, oh, what is his name? I always forget his name. Incredible actor. He was in... Um, I saw him the other day. He was in Terminator as well. Anyway, I, 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 uh, I forget the actor's name. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Now the Ripley embodies a lot of traits that are just going to almost with certainty make a watch go up in value. They are already around, and I'll leave a, a screen capture here, around the thousand dollar mark. I bought this just over a year ago for I think under between three and four hundred dollars. What are these factors? And it's, it's you couldn't get a better uh, mix or a, a better um, a combination to, to secure the, <laughs> the increase in value. So it's made in limited amount, first of all. I think it is, yeah, only 3,000 of these made, which for Seiko is a very small amount. Secondly, it's iconic because, well, for two reasons. It's uh, been immortalized in, in celluloid by uh, Sigourney Weaver. It was designed by Giugiaro. So Giugiaro, the hugely important, uh, one of the most iconic uh, Italian car designer of well, ever, undisputed icon of, of horology, of design, and thirdly, its distinctive look. It's asymmetrical case. Uh, I know it's a Marmite watch, it's not to everybody's uh, taste, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, for me, it brings a kind of childhood nostalgia. It is a bit of a dream come true, it is very fun. It's unlike anything out there, apart from other uh, Giugiaro watches. You know, I mean, look at that bracelet, the, the colors, the, the salmon pink hands. It looks like a, a kind of speedometer of a car, of, a, of an 80s racing car. Although divisive, it, it makes it unique. Um, and that certainly helps. So these factors, it, it's no surprise this is, what has it, uh, tripled? Yeah, we're, we're almost tripled in price in a year. So I think it's going to quadruple. Uh, what is what is it when it's five times? Uh, quin, quin, quintruple? No, no. <laughs> God knows. If you can't find the original, uh, the, the first uh, version of this watch, they're in the thousands now. They are in the thousands. None of the watches we're discussing today are really that uh, innovative, maybe in design, but, but when it comes to their movements. Um, and I think this, again, that misconception that it has something has to be hot horology or has to be luxury or has to have an incredible amount of refinement to increase in value. All these watches today uh, kind of go against that. that um, and, and, and of course, those things do help. But today's example, we are at the entry level, don't forget. Right, the third watch. And again, this is another channel favorite I bought quite recently. I also reviewed. This is a manual wind, and it's a beautiful manual wind from the 50s by Omega. Omega now a part of the Swatch group, but back then, especially in the 50s and 60s, and I consider that era pretty much the, the heyday or, the, or the, the golden years of Omega. So this is the reference 2496. It's a no-name Omega, so it doesn't belong to any particular line 
Although I would say early Sea Masters, a few cosmics perhaps, um, and if you're lucky, you can probably find a dynamic from, from later on at around this price range. But the no names in particular, I feel, are definitely gonna increase with a quality, instantly recognizable, world-renowned brand like Amiga, it's undoubtedly gonna increase in value. However, we have seen, and I did mention this in the review of this piece, if you missed it, have a look back. This was a very similar watch, was worn by, I think, the actor Ryan Gosling in the recent film, La La Land. And it goes to show you that the watch trend of going small again is starting to permeate into mainstream culture, into cinema. I do feel what triggered it was the Mad Men kind of phase a few years ago, and of course that's ended, but that's still, you know, it's still doing the rounds. I think the elegance, the style of that age is making a comeback. It was at least helping what classic watches like this become more desirable. And what makes Omega of this era for me so desirable, is that these were in totally in-house. This has the caliber 283, and a lot of the 200 caliber movements or the 200 series, and they ran into the 60s. Very, very robust, quite simple movements with a, they, they do operate at a slower vibrations an hour, less friction on the moving parts. And this, unbelievably, has an, a wonderful accuracy. Now it is a little bit fragile because obviously we have acrylic, uh, crystal, pretty much not water resistant, but I'm wearing this as a dress watch. For a long, long time, these were not very desired because of the, the small size. This is actually, I think a 33, although it wears a lot larger uh, because of the dial being so huge, it has the impression of it being larger. This fits me like a glove. And I gotta say, uh, Ryan Gosling's no name Omega from the same era, suits him like a glove too. I, I think this was definitely not watch casting because he's been known to wear vintage Rolexes, Air Kings, I think in a, a, a lot smaller sizes. He's undoubtedly a trendsetter, a style, um, I, I wouldn't say an icon, but style is obviously very important to him. Again, like the Timex, timeless, classic, elegant style. It's never gonna go out of fashion. Um, and I bought this one for a smidgen under 400. I feel maybe in a year, maybe two years, it's gonna creep over the 500 to 600, then it's gonna creep towards a thousand dollars. A lot of the Seamasters I was recommending on the used market, you know, a couple of years ago now, have already creeped towards a thousand dollars and they were previously 500. This is a shift in, in people's tastes Beautiful, beautiful watch, and actually now I'm looking at it, I wanna wear it. Um, so anyway, let's move on to the next watch. Okay, so the next piece is another channel favorite, and it's the Flightmaster, the SNA411. Now those of you who have been following the channel for a long time, I'm sure you already know about this watch. I thought when I got the Navi timer, I would get bored of this, I wouldn't need it anymore, especially now I have other beta watches. But yet, its charm, its appeal has not diminished. I'm still as besotted with it as when I first owned it. I never expected I would put this in a video uh, like today's, but, Recently, I've been getting a lot of emails, people saying they can't find them, they, they, the prices are, are going up, they're currently about almost $400 on Amazon. I think they're hovering about the 350 mark to 375 around there. Staggering, considering I think I bought this one for just over 100 um, a year or two ago. So why has the price of these suddenly dramatically increased. Well, and this happens with a lot of Seiko watches, suddenly people run out of them. Seiko's very secretive about if they discontinue models. I wouldn't be surprised if it has been discontinued, especially as there are uh, newer models. So obviously the amount of these is starting to run low. Secondly, it's design. It's a little bit smaller than most of the other alternatives. Now, actually I've printed out some notes because there are, and there was a great amount of speculation to its replacement. Now, I believe that Seiko replaced this particular model with a slightly later version, the SNA D05. It was named the Flight Computer rather than Flight Master. A very similar design, although they had removed the screw down pushers, 
uh, thus reducing its water resistance to 100 meters. It did have the same movement inside, which kind of leads me to believe that it was a replacement. Now this came out in 2008 and I did own a, uh, a gold tone version of it. I forget the reference now, but I, I talked about it actually in a, in a video a long time ago because it was one of the watches I've, I've got the most or received the most compliments uh, on, which is, which is interesting. Same features that have made this just an incredible bang per buck beta watch. You know, we've got the alarm, the dual time zone, the, 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 the two-handed sub-dial at the six o'clock, the chronograph obviously with that beautiful mechanical sweep to it. Now the Flightmaster is certainly more robust than its later versions with its incredible 200 meters water resistance. That lovely domed uh, hard lex, which is a bit of a bone of contention to some people. I actually like it, other people don't. And of course, that deep dial with that beautiful kind of stepped chapter ring that, that really draws you in. It is a very busy watch and it's an acquired taste. I understand again if you don't like it, but I absolutely adore it. Uh, it's, a, it's a great beta watch, still is. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the price has increased. The SNA413, which is the white dial with blue bezel, with red hands, now that is really rare now and very difficult to get. You might be able to find one, you know, from a seller in Singapore or on the grey market. Now that has definitely increased in price and I predict that the SNA will go the same way. The fact that it's not as big as some of its more contemporary cousins, shall we say, I think has also made it more desirable. So it's quite unique in the price range that it is. Somebody else also speculated that the SSC275 was a more modern replacement. This was a little bit more military inspired, had those wonderful kind of industrial, almost trigger style pushers. Uh, this had a different movement. This was the caliber V175, which uh, gave it solar power, which is very, very cool. But it's 44 millimeters, it's huge. It's not gonna be as much of a crowd pleaser as dear old flighty here. I honestly believe that the Flightmaster, if it hasn't already, is going to double in price uh, and it's going to stay rising. I don't think it's ever going to be, you know, a ridiculous amount, but it's certainly going to double in price. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Now, our first digital watch in our lineup. This is, of course, the G-Shock Rise Man, the GW9200, which has been discontinued. It's a twin sensor G-Shock, so it has an altimeter and a barometer. I've owned this several times, actually. I can't remember if I sold it or I gave it away, or it was in the last collection purge, I think about a year ago. Anyway, I bought this well under $200, well under $200. Um, you can still find it used for about two to 300, but some of the special limited editions have become extremely desirable. I'm glad there's a digital watch in here because there are channels out there, there are huge communities, G-Shock enthusiasts, it almost has its own kind of cult following and understandably so, they, I, I, I've been lusting after a Frogman recently. Um, I know, totally, totally too big for me, but there's just something about them. Anyway, we'll save that for another video. What's interesting about the Rise Man is that despite the technology being dated, now we're on, I think, the third or fourth generation of ABC watches like the Range Man, the full ABC, Ultimeter, Bromter, and the Compass. The, the sensor technology has dramatically improved. So, it's very much dated. What I love about the Rise Man, it was this smaller G-Shock. A lot of the G-Shocks are massive. So that already kind of makes it a little bit unique. It had a very cool design with the sensor protruding outwards, um, giving it this kind of space age, slightly Blade Runner aesthetic, very, very cool. But it's the Japanese versions of the limited editions that are skyrocketing. We have the Ice White version, which is the 9200PJ7JF, has this off-white color scheme. There's the 2008 Master of G, 9200RJ4JK. I think they're going for about 600, um, even more possibly, 
and you can only find them in Japan. Occasionally one comes on the market here, but that goes to show, I mean, what is that? That's a, 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 a triple increase in value. My personal favorite is the Men in Smoky Gray, which has negative display. It's in this kind of blacked out color scheme. Those are going for about 500. I believe the reference is 9200GY1. I, I think I could be wrong about that, but anyway, search for Smoky Gray. But Casio in particular is a gold mine, especially really retro pieces from the, from the 90s like the Skywalker, the uh, Surf Timer, that have a very distinctive look to them. Um, those are undoubtedly gonna skyrocket. There is a healthy market um, and following for these kind of watches. Okay, moving on to number six. I think that was number five. Yeah, number six, 90s Swatch Watch, actually even 80s Swatch Watches. Now I have a prime example here today uh, this I seldom take out of the safe because this is a Patrick Heron Swatch Watch. I managed to pick this up for I think about 30 bucks on eBay, dated 1993. Now the original pa uh, Patrick Heron, I have a book here all about swatches and if I just open it up, the original came out in 1985 so this is slightly later. This is not going to go for thousands in an auction like the 80s version, although I don't doubt for a second it's gonna get a few hundred at least, possibly thousands in the future. And yeah, it's bizarre that such a, a simple plastic quartz uh, watch is gonna have such strong investment potential. I know, it is a little bit surreal. Um, but what drives its desirability is the, obviously the artist, and in this fantastic a guide for connoisseurs and collectors. The swatch book gives you uh, all the different um, collaborations, you know, from, from watches. Uh, there was the, um, the Mimo Palladino watches, of course. There was the Pop Art series. Uh, there was even collaborations with artists like Madonna. There's even the Mozart here, which is just utterly ridiculous. It has kind of like floral uh, lace on the uh, on the um, on the strap, I mean, and and a, and a bust of uh, old Wolfgang there, incredible, really really cool. Zany, of course, some of them are loud and brash and, and very 80s and 90s, but they are lovable and they have a very strong um, demand by collectors. Yeah, I must admit, it's not to my taste. I'm never gonna wear this, uh, but I like the fact that you know I spent thirty dollars. And who knows, could be a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand in, in a few years. Very, very cool. And it's the ultimate irony that Swatch, you know, the, the, the word is the amalgamation of second and watch. It was designed as something uh, actually like the original fashion watch, a disposable, uh, fashion led. A lot of people think that Swatch means Swiss watch, but it just happens to be. Swiss, it actually means second watch. That was the ideology behind it. Okay, moving on to number seven, the final uh, watch uh, in my lineup, and it is another favorite of the channel, the Citizen NY0040 Promaster Automatic Diver. These, uh, not that long ago, were retailing for under $200, around the $200 mark. But recently people have been emailing me saying they can't find them, they watch the video, they, they love it because it has a very, its own, completely its own style. It is quite unique. The, the crown, I think it's at the seven or eight o'clock position unusually. And the provenance behind this piece is it was issued to the Marina Militare. Now if you can find an actual version with it printed on the dial, those are extremely desirable but rare. The actual civilian version, or without the printing on the dial, exactly the same. I mean, it's just, it's just two words on the dial. It's not the largest of watches, which again, kind of makes it a little bit more different to, to, to a lot of the offerings. And Citizen have since replaced it. I think there's a newer ProMaster that's kind of superseded it. There's various versions. There's the 09W with the stunning luminous dial. There's also a version with a sun blue, sun blue, sorry, sunburst blue dial, which is quite dazzling. So again, we see another trait that keeps repeating itself in the lineup. It's a watch that's been discontinued, but this has a second 
um, factor driving its desirability and that is of course it being the choice for the Italian Royal Navy. We've seen countless watches you know from Tudor Submariners, Rolex Submariners to um, you know Amiga Seamasters back in the day being being used by various militaries or divisions or regiments. Again this this definitely helps a watch and what I love about the Citizen is that it's not something super luxury. It's not a Seamaster. You know, it's something very affordable. Now, I'm not quite sure at the current price uh, because this discontinuation has only recently happened. My prediction is maybe within a year to two, it will, it will probably not double, but actually, yeah, it could, it could approach 400. It could approach 400. I don't think it's ever gonna go above five. Definitely the, the, the actual Marina Militare, the official ones with, that, with them, that printed on the dial, those definitely will go, will keep going up. Um, I don't doubt that for a second. Anyway, guys, those are my seven watches of choice. It'll be really interesting to see over the year and, and revisit this video perhaps in a year's time to see just how much these watches have changed in value. So I'm gonna leave it there. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, and nominations for watches under $500 that are gonna double, quadruple, whatever, over the next coming years. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.